in this case, I have developers that are telling me, yeah, they're not listening to you. I mean, it makes sense because they, if they were, then they would start making games that people actually want. But honestly, I think this is coming to an end, honestly. Because I think, like, companies are putting more and more money into bigger and bigger projects. And honestly, the problem is that, like, they're trying to put as much money into it, but, like, the, the I feel like the amount that you can get back is just not growing as much as they would want it to grow. Subscribe, please! So this video is from Legendary Drops. I've been watching some of his videos lately and this one has been one of those I wanted to watch on stream and kind of just, you know, give my opinion because I think it's an interesting topic. Uh, everything going on with uh, Ubisoft, how Ubisoft has really gone to potato. I've essentially, I've watched this video here, the complete and utter collapse of Ubisoft. It was very interesting to kind of see like where they come from and where they are right now. And uh, they're really not in a good place. Um, so we are going to be watching this and uh, I'm very excited for this one, actually. <laughs> so let's have a look, Zeus. Things at Ubisoft are far worse than I ever could have imagined. After my last video chronicling the rise and fall of Ubisoft, I had both current and former Ubisoft developers reach out for comment. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking okay, about the awesome. issues that the studios face today from the perspective of their own employees. Everything from Me Too movement allegations to agenda-driven content. I want to contrast the comments made in these interviews with what we've seen from Assassin's Creed Shadows and Star Wars Outlaws. Okay. This company has a deep-rooted leadership issue, going as far to think that the vast majority of online criticism is just a toxic minority of gamers. Oh, this is crazy. I don't know if you guys know, but essentially anyone, like there's been, a lot of people are not happy, obviously, with Assassin's Creed and also not happy with Star Wars Outlaws. And it's like, okay, we're not happy, happy because of this, 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 and this. And then so many people from Ubisoft are just like, oh, no, it's just because you're racist. And it's like, oh, so you're going to disregard the 20 points I've made? And you're going to pretend that just because the protagonist is black? It's like, it's so crazy how they are deluding themselves into thinking that any form of criticism is just because the person not happy is bigoted. It's insane. This company... And, I mean, don't take me wrong. Some people are bigoted. And I'm sure some people like that are making comments that are very rude. But let's be real. At the end of the day, let's say if those people, the bigoted people... Let's say if they were just trolling and it wasn't the majority of people that were complaining, then why were the sales bad then? Why did Outlaws not sell well? Well, maybe it's because there's actually good criticism and people don't want to play the game that you're making, essentially, right? So, like, let's stop lying. And at the end of the day, okay, let's say everybody's a bigot. Well, unfortunately... Um, the phrase, the customer is always right. Well, like in service and Karens and stuff is obviously, you know, I don't think they can just do whatever they want. In the space of a free market, the customer is always right means that if they don't want the product you're making or if you're making a product that is not for them, they are not going to buy them, Right? Or, or buy it. So if you're making a game that doesn't resonate with anyone, the customer the customer is not going to buy your product. So you can't just berate gamers because they don't want to buy your game. Uh, oh my God, it's so dumb. <laughs> and its leadership God. think that they are on the righteous path. <laughs> Little do they know, it's a dead end. Yeah, I'm so tired of companies like being so self-righteous and thinking that they have to fix the internet or they have to teach people values and they're just like virtue signaling like crazy. It's insane. Assassin's Creed Shadows has been steeped in controversy and criticism since its initial reveal. Online discourse surrounding the game has been almost entirely negative with long-term fans of the franchise, general audience, and Japanese audiences up in arms over the creative liberties that Ubisoft has taken with the depiction of Yasuke, the fabled Black Samurai, and Feudal Japan. Japanese creators, as well as just random bystanders, have taken to Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube, and Reddit 
voicing their concerns offended by the game's representation of their history and culture. Inaccuracies like using Chinese architecture instead of Japanese, the oh legitimacy and relevance of the game's protagonist, Yasuke, and even going as far as stealing a flag and imagery oh from the Seki God, Hara I saw Tai that. historical reenactment group where the company had to formally apologize for not asking for permission to use their materials. Ubisoft. <laughs> this is crazy because like, uh, I think I saw it. It's like one of the flags that had the symbol on it. It's just, it's one of the things like you can't just use this symbol without asking for permission. You just cannot. And even worse on some of the flags, the symbol was cut in half because there wasn't enough space on the flag, so they just cut it instead of making it smaller. <laughs> and it's just like, you can't do that. It's so disrespectful. It's insane. And also, obviously, like not using proper architecture. It, it's so insane how they're trying to signal virtue about like, oh, so you don't like your game because it's a black protagonist. You don't like your game because you're just bigoted. Meanwhile, they're trying to do, to signal virtue. They're, you know, I don't want to say wokeness, but their cultural representation by just getting it wrong and just like, <laughs> like just getting it wrong and enforcing stereotype. Like, yeah, it's just, selling the flag is awful, but I gotta be real. Who cares about the rest? AC has never been accurate. Okay, I think it's not necessarily... It's not that the game is not accurate. I think the problem is that when you're trying to signal virtue, that you're doing it to represent the culture properly, and that you're going, like, on so many interviews to say, like, this is historically accurate, people who disagree with us are just bigots, this is how it was, and then you're wrong... I think the problem is there. If you say, oh, we're just doing bullshit, it's fine. I think people wouldn't care. I think the people that are upset is because they pretend or they say that they care about the historical accuracy of it. That's the problem. This adventure into Japanese history has been a complete disaster and it's only going to get worse. On September 11th of 2024, an article was penned by the New York Times titled The Fi Oh, by the way, when it comes to architecture, I don't know if you guys saw, um, there was a, in the, like, one of the, the, the figurines they made, the figure, I don't know if it was a Funko Pop, it was something dumb like that. There was a figure for Assassin's Creed with the two protagonists, and there was, like, a broken Tory gate in the back. And I'm sure that wasn't their intention. But that Tory gate broken in half looked exactly or like too closely to the broken Tory gate that is a monument representing the devastation of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Nagisaka, uh, Nagasaki, Nagasaki, something like that. That's just like, oh my God. It's just like, you're saying so hard about how you're trying to be historically accurate and you want to like really represent Japanese culture. And you're like, you're like okay, here, this is the Tori gate that was broken because of the atomic bomb. Have fun. That's crazy. Nagasaki. Yeah, yeah. Hiroshima. Well, the Tori, the broken Tori gate is in Nagasaki. Hiroshima is uh, just a different city that got also bombed, unfortunately. Fight over a black samurai in Assassin's Creed. The writer, Zachary Small, misrepresents the controversy and player concerns as merely those of a toxic minority of angry Western gamers, and the entire time he fixates on the race of Yasuke and not the broader implications at play in Ubisoft's mishandling and the frank disrespect for Japanese culture and history. This article was That's a collaboration so between Ubisoft and the New York Times in an attempt to redirect the discussions surrounding Assassin's Creed Shadows and minimize the feedback. The writer spoke with Kazuma Hashimoto, a consultant and translator for the games industry, later to be found out to be an employee of Sweet Baby Incorporated that <laughs> did consultant work for Ubisoft. Of but course. Hashimoto claimed that it was people in the West who were upset with seeing Yasuke as a samurai and that many of the online negative comments were written in Japanese appeared to be roughly translated from English. Effective yeah, everybody that's unhappy is just people faking to be Japanese, obviously. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. ...hand waving the increasingly loud and valid concerns of the Japanese, asserting that it's all made up outrage. 
nothing more than the gamer's war against DEI or inclusivity in video games. I find it all too poetic and predictable for a AAA publisher to brush off player concerns and use their connections in the media to try to steer public discourse and sentiment into a favorable direction. All of these claims made by the New York Times as well as other writers are patently false. You can see the criticisms of Ubisoft's recent releases and the future release in Assassin's Creed Shadows everywhere. It's impossible to ignore. It's so annoying to see that all the time. And I feel like it happened for Outlaws and it's happening for this game. It's like, if you don't like a game, you get insulted. You, like, you get called like, like a sexist or a racist. Oh, you don't like how Assassin's Creed Shadow is looking? That's because you don't like black people. Obviously, you're, you're just racist. Oh, you don't like Star Wars Outlaws? Oh, that's because you're sexist. You, you don't like to play as a female protagonist. No, we don't like how the game looks because it doesn't look good. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. There is a video that is only about a trailer and the amount of bullshit that's happening on screen, animation not looking good, collisions not being well, just weapon and objects going through models all the time. Like, even the sword doesn't fit in the scabbard. And it's just like, yeah, sure, it's little things, but they add up to a freaking mountain. So, no, I feel like, yeah, I can understand why people in Japan or would be upset that, like, the game is finally centered around, you know, their cultures and they would have wanted the main protagonist to be a Japanese character instead of, like, some easy, you know, some easy, quote-unquote, points by using the only, like, one of the only black person that was in Japan at the time and whose historical... Uh, the historical knowledge we have of me of him is incredibly like small and just like blew it up to make him up like to be a samurai or whatever. It is just so strange. You have so many good options, so many even like legendary historical figures that already exist that could have been used for that role. And yeah, it doesn't have to be historically accurate. But that was such a missed opportunity and it does feel disrespectful. It seems like just a weird way to be like, hey, we, you know, we, we, I mean, this is what video games are nowadays. If you don't like it, you're the problem. It's just so strange. I'm sorry, I ramble a lot because like this pisses me off. <laughs> videos know. and promotional material ratioed by dislikes and comments in mass numbers. Videos like mine and many yeah, true, others Ryu. reaching widespread appeal because we have that many people that agree or share similar opinions. With that said, I couldn't imagine that it was possible for anyone to ignore this level of feedback, and Ubisoft has to be seeing it. So I spoke with a few developers from Ubisoft to shed some light on these issues. <sighs> All right, let's see. I started off by asking how Ubisoft internalizes and discusses general criticism from players and- Let me guess, they don't? <laughs> Let me guess, they don't. Uh, I think the problem, like, there's no way they actually consider player criticism. There's just no way. I think they have to ignore it. Or if you don't try to ignore it, you are yourself labeled as a bigot. And then you're going to have issues to keep your job in the company. <laughs> I mean, I refuse to believe. I feel like more and more big companies like that are in a weird... Um, I think there's a lot of toxic positivity going around. And I think if you don't agree or if you like criticize in any way, you put your job at risk. I honestly think that. And the rest of the industry, whether that's its repetitive design, agenda-driven content, or predictable games. They responded saying, at a high level, they rarely talk about it. At a project level, they... Wow brush it off as toxic gamer talk. Oh as Asmongold correctly pointed out in a video of his, Ubisoft is filled with toxic positivity that prevents there any There it growth. is. I then asked, what about the Japanese community's backlash Bruh. over Assassin's Creed Shadows? It's obvious that they haven't done their research, and even the smallest details are going to be noticed by a culture that's as proud as the Japanese. They responded by saying that the criticisms haven't been talked about, and they've only issued demands that we mustn't engage with discussion on that topic publicly. Oh Meaning my everything God. that we've set up into this point, all the criticism that we've had over the years for Ubisoft games, even that of the industry itself has fallen on deaf ears. 
I don't know if it's sad or if it's somewhat, yeah, you know, it's somewhat cathartic to have that validated. I mean, it's the main complaint that the vast majority of gamers have had over the years, which is that these companies aren't listening to us. And in this case, I have developers that are telling me, yeah, they're not listening to you. I mean, it makes sense because they, if they were, then they would start making games that people actually want. But honestly, I think this is coming to an end, honestly, because I think like companies are putting more and more money into bigger and bigger projects. And honestly, the problem is that like they're trying to put as much money into it, but like the the I feel like the amount that you can get back is just not growing as much as they would want it to grow. You know what I mean? And um so like I I, I don't know what they're doing. Like they're putting so much money for games like Concord, games like a Star Wars Outlaw, games like, you know, Assassin's Creed. It's just like nobody is asking for those games. Nobody is asking for those games. Like, literally nobody. So, well, okay. Some people are asking for those games, but not the way they are making it. And I, I don't know why they believe that just putting, injecting more money into this project is a good idea. I really don't. Because also, let's just look at it this way. The gaming community is not infinite. Like, there's not going to be millions of gamers, of new gamers every day. And the time that people have is also quite limited. So at some point, the amount of money you put into a project is not going to result in more money being made for the company. Because people can't afford to buy so many games or put so, many, so much time into those games. So I, I think the, the bigger those games become, the less profitable they are. I really believe so. And I think like that's why we, we are seeing so many indie games coming into the market and being massive success. And they're not trying to create an entire franchise or anything. They're just trying to make a good game and they work. Like like, you know, Vampire Survivors and like smaller games like that. And if instead of putting like four hundred million bucks into Concord, they could put one million bucks or like a hundred million bucks into four different games. Also, companies like Ubisoft have to stop just making four games a year. It's insane. I'm exaggerating, but they're trying to put out a triple A game every single year. It's ridiculous. <laughs> One, because they don't want to take criticism. And two, because they don't know how to differentiate bad from good criticism. I think this is my patented catchphrase by now, but when you have this much negative discourse surrounding your games, you need to be listening regardless of whether or not it's good or bad feedback in your eyes, regardless if you align with these people's political beliefs or social political beliefs or whatever it might be. None of that matters. When you have your games on fire as much as Ubisoft games have been lately, you need to put those fires out somehow. And the only way that you can do that is by listening to them mm. and implementing whatever feedback you possibly can into your games to make them better. Regardless... I mean, there's always going to be bad criticism uh, and bad feedback, obviously. But the, the goal is to differentiate which is good and which is bad and actually make the game better. But regardless, even if you make bad changes because of bad feedback, it's better than ignore and keep failing. I think it's better to like fail faster so that you can actually get onto something better and improve. They are just letting themselves die by listening to no one and keep putting out the same kind of content out there that people don't want. This is dying and failing incredibly slowly. Other thing is, I'm sorry. I am sick of, I am disgusted by the blatant, feigned virtue over how much they care about Japanese culture and history. I'm sorry. Yeah, you that's are the problem. bastardizing Japanese culture and history for profit. That's what you're trying. <laughs> that just reminds me <laughs> about it. Like, yeah, we really want to present like Japanese culture, and you know, like we have we have a black protagonist, so we we want to represent black people. Oh, there's a combat. Let's put some hip hop. <laughs> hard but they're just being racist themselves it's insane trying to do here you're not trying to make a history piece we know that it's loosely based on very 
loosely based on Japanese culture and history. Yeah. Look at you guys. You put out a Tory Gate figurine, a half Tory. <laughs> oh my god, that's what I was talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. Gate figurine with your characters on it without knowing the cultural relevance of the half Tory Gate after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Do you have any idea what that means to these people? Oh my god. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's so embarrassing. At the end of the day, it all comes down to leadership. When you look at Ubisoft's messaging, the lackluster delivery of titles like X Defiant and Star Wars Outlaw. And I mean, listen, everybody makes mistakes, right? And that's okay. But the problem is that they're making way too many mistakes while saying they are trying their best to depict Japan as, as how it was. So if you're really trying your best and you have experts in the field working with you to make sure that it's properly represented, how does this go through? How does this happen? Again and again and again and again. And that's the issue. Cause the inaccuracies and screw ups with Assassin's Creed Shadows, you see a developer that has no clear plan or vision for what players want what good games look like, or how to even do their job. I took the time to talk to the Ubisoft developers about workplace culture, about the initiative that they've taken for diversity hiring, and what happens behind the scenes at Ubisoft, and it's wild to see how accurate some of the assumptions that have been made by myself and others. Now, continuing my conversation with one of the developers, I wanted to find more about the workplace structure and management. And seeing as though the company has had initiatives that have been put in place, make the workplace a little bit more diverse i asked what benefits have you seen is there more diversity in thought or is it creating a more one-sided environment they said that so far the initiative hasn't had any impact on the team that i'm a part of however it's clear that some topics are taboo what happened is now that people end up in a meeting with hr for trivial stuff not adding smiley faces to a message or adding an exclamation point at the end of a message because some people are reporting it for harassment this can't be true. Oh my god. Not putting a smiley or putting an exclamation mark is microaggressions? <laughs> I can totally see that be true. I mean, I mean, I'm assuming he vetted the people that like contacted him, and I assume those people are really from Ubisoft. I mean, everybody could be lying. Sure. So let's just assume that with the information we have now, it is true. If it is true, that's horrendous. And this is exa exactly what I mean. If a smiley or an exclamation mark is enough to get you to be called by HR, imagine what it would be like if you said, uh, maybe let's not have a black protagonist in our culturally... Uh, an historically accurate Japan. Imagine what would happen. Do you think you still have a job the next day? If you don't put a smiley and you have to go to HR, imagine if you say that maybe the protagonist shouldn't be a black man. And that doesn't mean that the protagonist can never be a black man. It's just that in those circumstances, maybe it just should be an actual Japanese person, right? And it's not like Ubisoft has always had like a problem or anything. Like there's been plenty of protagonists that were like of like varied uh, ethnicity, right? Like Italian and Arabic characters and stuff like that. So it, it's not like, like that wouldn't be outrageous. This is so ridiculous. Oh my god. Meant. One of the things that wasn't in your video is that Ubisoft had some controversy during the Me Too period letting go of a manager in high positions yep. and some left on their own because they knew they'd be discovered. I then asked, what was the impact of this in the workplace? They responded by saying the editorial direction and overall mindset shifted from the boys club to safe content, reaching for plain characters like K and star Wars is a perfect example of this. The idea to have beautiful characters such as Baldur's gate or uncharted is met with distrust. The develop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
we, we can't have uh, beautiful characters. They need to be realistic and fat and ugly. Helper <laughs> shared sentiments saying that safe content also leads to limited opportunity. <laughs> I mean, like, I understand, like, representation is good, having different body type is good, but also, let's be fucking real. People who are playing a video game play video games to be entertained. People who are playing video games generally want to feel cool, feel good, and they want to be a cool, badass, hot character in general. When I play a game, I like being a hot character, and I think the majority of people are like me. I might be wrong, to be fair. It's just my opinion. And I think that if you're making games where everybody is the garbage can from Concord, nobody are going to play those games. People are going to be upset. Those games don't need to be realistic. Exactly. Those games need to appeal to you. And there are games. They're not real. They're fantasy. Let your fantasy characters be hot. The characters are ugly on purpose. They are. They're realistic, quote-unquote. Like, even... I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm missing it. Because I, I know it happened in a game. I think it was for Star Wars Outlaw. I might be wrong, okay? Uh, but maybe, maybe it was for the game. I know it happened for one game. I think it's Star Wars Outlaw. I think that the character, the protagonist of Star Wars Outlaw, is based on a real person. And the real person is actually more beautiful than the character in the game. They made the character and made her uglier on purpose. Is it Fable? It's possible. Either way, that this kind of stuff is happening because they're really trying to go for the quote-unquote safe approach and like politically correct approach is ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. And see what happens when ca people are trying to make a game with beautiful characters. Do you see the outrage that happened because Stella Blade character was too hot? This is so ridiculous. And I'm glad that those Eastern companies don't bend the knee for this kind of stuff. I'm really glad. Because someone has to not bend the knee. ...on the gameplay side. Even for Star Wars, we had to work with Disney, which would have shut down most attempts at depicting a true criminal underworld with cruelty and drama. When you put this developer's perspective in line with the recent failures and controversies at Ubisoft or any Wait, AAA see. developers depicting a... Uh, even for Star Wars, we had to work with Disney, which would have shut down most of them that depicting a true criminal underworld with cruelty and drama. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is fair. This is like outside influence that makes it so because it's like Disney, you can't have a character that's actually like a criminal. I think this is stupid, by the way. But I understand that if this is like kind of out of their hand. Right? It's still stupid. True criminal underworld with cruelty and drama. When you put this developer's perspective in line with the recent failures and controversies at Ubisoft or any AAA developer at this yeah. point, it all makes sense. An overcorrection in sensitivity brought on by the boys club days that many studios experienced during their early years. As such, many games today lack the teeth and grit that players crave because those things are seen as problematic or unsafe to make in the workplace. Don't use emojis or exclamation points. You could offend someone. Holy shit. How soft have we gotten? It reminds me of the time where the Helldivers 2 community manager went on a ban spree oh on their Discord God. because players were using a throw-up emoji on furry art that was posted in their Discord. Sometimes people need to be offended. Well, I'm going to try to resist <laughs> the pull yourself up by- And by the way, that moderator was skipped. So there was fury, furry art on their official Helldivers 2 Discord server. People didn't like it and reacted to it with vomit emoji. And that moderator banned all those people. He was never held like accountable for his action. It was never removed from the staff. This is ridiculous, dude. Your bootstraps tirade. Friction on some levels is necessary in life. Now, that doesn't mean that people should be allowed to openly harass others, but there are major issues that arise when you have emojis that can get you fired. This overreaction and overcorrection leads to a workplace that is actively hostile towards freedom of thought, expression, and criticism. As one of the interviewees mentioned earlier, they noticed a culture of toxic positivity. From my perspective, toxic positivity is fake people saying fake things and, in the case of Ubisoft, making fake products. 
Nobody wants to live their entire life being terrified that someone is going to misunderstand them. And when you're at a studio like Ubisoft and you're not even allowed to make characters attractive. To be fair, I will say that. The... Uh, what's the word? The, the, the atmosphere or the environment makes it so people can't say anything. So it's not like, oh, don't be like that, right? Because the problem is that people don't want to lose their jobs, right? So they feel like they can't say anything. And once you see people not saying anything, even when they disagree, then everybody starts doing the same. And so I completely understand. You've been working in this industry or this is your dream job. You just joined. And you're worried that if you say anything, you're going to get fired. And you obviously don't want to get fired, especially nowadays. Uh, with like, It's hard to get a job. It really is, especially with AI and all that good stuff. So um, I, I feel like I, I do feel uh, for those people. I, I definitely understand. Um, it, in my opinion, it's definitely, as you said, it's the problem comes from management issue. It's, it's a management issue. It's a... CEO issue. It's the fact that the company policies is fostering that kind of environment. That is the problem, right? Otherwise, it might upset people at the studio. You have a problem. This culture of fear and forced uniformity stifles creativity and innovation. Mm. It's no wonder that Ubisoft is struggling to produce anything of real substance when their own developers are walking on eggshells, more worried about HR complaints than creating groundbreaking games. How can you make bold, impactful content when every idea is scrutinized for being too risky, too offensive, or too unsafe? It's a workplace where mediocrity is rewarded and where pushing boundaries, the very things that games are supposed to do, is seen as a liability. This workplace culture, this overreaction and overcorrection has infected just about every single industry that's out there. I worked in construction for seven years up until last December, and the company that I worked for was more afraid of HR issues than they were of injuries. We worked with hydrogen sulfide Bruh. and hydrogen cyanide, gases that if released could kill half of a city. <laughs> you know, we've discussed modern audiences, the mythical, magical modern audiences and soft modern games. We found the audience. It's the people that are running these companies nowadays. You have folks that are walking around on eggshells, afraid to say anything. Anecdotal, but just like a few weeks ago or a month ago or so, I remember I was live streaming and instinctively I said something was retarded. I'm a millennial. We all grew up saying it. It's a product of my upbringing. Say what you will. I didn't say it consciously, it just came out. And one of my chatters pops up and says, how often do you say that word? Bruh. I banned the fuck out of them. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that. Are you Listen, kidding me? People that- I I'm not a big fan of the word retarded. And I, I, I try, like I try not to use it, but sometimes I use it and I don't really care. I think the most important thing is that like people forget, but intent really freaking matters. If you say that something irritated, let's be freaking real. It, the intent is really not to to hurt anyone that might have some, you know, learning disabilities. I have some learning disabilities, right? And I'm not saying this gives me a pass, but also people have to contextualize the use of certain words and not just looking to be offended all the time. And I think that's the problem. Like some of those people are just waiting to pounce for anything that you might say or do that is not politically correct anymore. And I think that's out dumb. There that are waiting, prepared to be offended. Jesus fucking A. Sick there of it. it is. You cannot have <laughs> workplaces that are out there where every single thing that you say, you have to watch every word that comes out of your mouth. Otherwise, it could be your livelihood. Yeah. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you can walk around saying anything. That's Absolutely. not what this is. Everybody knows. I think that's the most frustrating part when you have these kind of conversations is that you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But the intellectual dishonesty around this kind of thing is Agreed. just 100%. mind boggling. We have workplace environments that actively work against any type of creative or constructive criticism. That's how you get games like this. This is how games and products are being ruined over time is because mm. nobody's allowed to criticize things properly you have places you have people in the workplace that are like ah, i don't think that these characters are going to be received well by the fans but this is going to come to an end by the way chat because um 
I mean, let's be real. Like, those people are not stupid, right? I mean, a lot of those people are not stupid. And they're seeing that it's not working. So they're going to have to make some change. And either they'll make them by themselves or they'll be forced to do so. And by force, I mean they're going to shut down. Or, you know, there's going to be some internal restructuring. The same way, like, Ubisoft is actually going through a internal investigation uh, regarding, like, what's going on with the project, etc., etc. So people are going to have their heads on the chopping block. This is happening. Um, so either they're going to fail and, and explode and, like, you know, file for bankruptcy and other video game companies that are making games that people actually want uh, are going to take their place. Or they're going to course correct, essentially. It, it's going to happen. I think this is reaching a boiling point. And uh, it's starting to explode in people's faces right now. For those AAA companies, essentially. That's my opinion. They're not allowed to say anything about it. They can't say it's not hot enough. It's not masculine enough. They can't say that because it's problematic to say so. Tame and safe are the antonyms of exciting and daring. Baldur's Gate 3 was exciting and daring. Mm. It was. Star Wars Outlaws. Tame and safe. Whether it's their poor job at representing Japan or the trailers of Assassin's Creed, there are clearly levels of incompetency at work. As many players have pointed out in the game trailers, the promotional materials that are meant to sell the game, you can see frame rate issues, texture issues, poor collision detection, weapons clipping yep. through characters, and more. Controversies aside, this game doesn't look like it's ready for launch, and in fact, its developer just recently came out and canceled their appearance at Tokyo Game Show and announced that the game would be delayed until February. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> can you imagine the bloodbath if it showed up at TGS? Oh my god. Like, that would have been... Like, that would have been sad. <laughs> that was the right move. Even if they didn't delay the game, that was the right move regardless. Also, I'm having a hard time figuring out, like, how are they going to make the game, like, good in February? Like, how is that going to happen? Because, like, the game looks so bad. I mean, maybe they can work some magic, but I feel like it's too soon. I don't know, man. There's so many issues. I, I don't see it, like becoming amazing in like five months but who knows who knows hey you gotta stay hopeful along with the delay ubisoft ceo recently issued a memo to their employees that ended up getting leaked publicly and it oh showcases just how out of touch this company is with their mm -hmm. players rather than acknowledging their real missteps they're clinging to critic scores pointing out star wars outlaws had a solid 76 on metacritic oh i didn't know that you were towards wait Outlaw Star Wars Outlaws initial sales proved softer than expected softer. It'd be softer. Despite solid ratings from players that recognize the game's faithful transcription of the original trilogy's essence of richness. Despite solid ratings from players. 76 on Metacritic. This is not players. This is... This is critics. Okay. Let's put it this way. We have millions of players. And for like a million of players, how many critics are there going to be? At the end of the day, critics are just people that give their opinion. And they might be better at formulating their opinion, explaining what they think, or they might have been doing that for a long time. Uh, and this is their job, sure. But they do not represent everyone. You can't say that... Despite solid rating from players. No, this is solid ratings from critics. And if your critic gives a game a 10 out of 10, but all the players playing the game hate it, maybe you, you shouldn't be happy that critics are giving you a high score. They need to make games for gamers, not game reviewers. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, yeah, who cares about 10 critics giving your game a good score if the review, like, the player score is, like, 2 out of 10? And of course, there's going to be some edge cases. Of course, there's going to be some cases where, like, they review bomb and whatnot, or they just, like, want to shit on the game because, like, Diablo 4 did some changes with the new patch and people are not happy, so they're giving it a 1 out of 10 or a 2 out of 10. Like, those are some rare cases. But if nobody likes your game, don't be like, oh, pff, that's weird. We didn't sell well, even though people like it. No, people don't like it. Critics like it. It's not the same. And, I mean, critics are people. But they don't represent gamers, quote-unquote. ...had a solid 76 on Metacritic. Oh, 
I didn't know that you were trying to sell the game to game reviewers. That makes a lot of sense, seeing as though that you're... Also, it's crazy. Let's be real. Most game reviewers don't buy their games. <laughs> they get their games. They're reviewers. They get a special review copy. Oh, my God. Completely ignoring player feedback that clearly shows that your game is hovering in mediocrity. Even worse, they believe that Black Friday sales are somehow going to magically turn things around. <laughs> Not realizing that no amount of discounting will make up for a product that fundamentally mm -hmm. misses the mark and nobody's interested in. The memo reads more like a corporate spin than a genuine reflection of failure. No mention of the controversies or deeper issues that are plaguing the company. Man. They talk about how all players want are highly polished games on launch day, when the truth is players are craving meaningful, risk-taking, authentic... I mean... It's not like their games are highly polished anyway, so like that sounds stupid anyway. That that's so beside the point. <laughs> Authentic content. Things that Ubisoft hasn't seen in decades. Even in their own memo to their own employees, they can't speak frankly about their mistakes. This sanitized messaging shows just how deeply disconnected the company is from the people that it should be listening to. The players. So Interested in the perspective of the employees who received this memo, I had a few questions on their thoughts of the messaging and the leadership of the company. I asked, what has been the message from management to the staff about Ubisoft's declining sales? What do they believe is the reason behind it? They responded, the fun fact is they don't talk much about it. They mainly focus on the fact that they reached their financial objectives, which are mainly achieved through casual player sales, not the vocal gamer minority that are sick of what you described in your video. Also, something to know is that through the years, the number of management floors has increased to ridiculous amounts. So communication is often blurry unless they come directly from HQ. And even then, it's almost entirely corpo bullshit that isn't useful in the end. Dang. I asked another employee to verify the increase in management at the company, fearing that this is likely one of the biggest issues that's facing the company, seeing that lack of clear and creative okay. vision. They painted a picture of a company that's not only overrun with management, but that's passively aggressive about removing higher paid and talented employees while slotting in underskilled and unexperienced ah, management at a cheaper rate. That explains everything. They claim that Ubisoft as an employer shows little regard for their developers. What happens in practice is that they essentially push out senior engineers promoting junior engineers to senior roles after just a few years of experience, oftentimes with experience in just one engine. Meanwhile, experienced developers with far broader skill sets are being overlooked. What? This constant cycle of turnover with Dang. inexperienced leaders leads to Dang. noticeable drops in quality with bugs appearing in their games. The passionate, dedicated developers leave while those who are just going through the motions stay behind. This doesn't just affect the technical quality of their games, but also impacts the design and creativity. For instance, you'll find designers working on FPS mechanics who have never played an FPS game before or engineers who don't understand how the mechanics they're building are supposed to feel. There's a lack of passion and skill across the board, and the results are obvious. <sighs> That's outrageous. I mean, it kind of explains everything we've seen lately, right? But uh, holy crap. Yeah. I mean, I understand, like, with the amount of games they're trying to pump out every single year, I mean, they need to cut, cut they, they need to cut costs somewhere, I guess. I mean, it makes sense, right? Just more slop every year, and the slop is getting sloppier. That line about designers working on FPS games and leading FPS projects struck a chord with me. Not long ago, Ubisoft released X Defiant, a military shooter that was meant to compete with the likes of Call of Duty. However, since the game's release, they've lost the vast majority of their player base, with Ubisoft claiming that the game isn't dying, despite it reportedly losing 94% of the... <laughs> it's not dying! We still have 6% of the players playing. It takes about half an hour to get one lobby going, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> players on Xbox. Why is okay. X Defiant ran into so many issues? Netcode, hit registration, and general shooter gameplay issues. 
that those are like the three big things you need to nail. Those are the three only things you mostly need to like get properly in a shooter game. Those are the three decent things that actually were done properly in Concord. It still failed. But at least the gameplay was okay. That's the bare freaking minimum. Common problems that are normally ironed out well before a game ever hits the market, especially a shooter. It's core mm -hmm. to the gameplay. If you're playing a live service shooter, all you do is shoot. That's the gameplay. But when the shooting doesn't work, you don't have a game. Ubisoft's oh leadership God. is completely disconnected from the reality of game development and player expectations. The problems stem from a bloated management structure that's prioritizing reaching financial targets through casual player sales, rather than listening to the core gaming community that's sick of their tired formulas. Even their own developers are frustrated as they watch as talented senior engineers are pushed out of the studios and inexperienced juniors are promoted far too quickly, leading to a noticeable drop in quality. It's no wonder their games are riddled with bugs and lack any real innovation. This company is more focused on appearances rather than creating meaningful, engaging content. The quality of their games doesn't matter as long as they aren't offending anyone. When you see the issues that plague Assassin's Creed Shadows, the pandering, the generic virtue, the lies, the cover-ups, and the lack of understanding of what they're apparently inspired by, when you see how safe and tame, how boring, buggy, and soulless Star Wars Outlaws is, when you see how their most anticipated shooter in X Defiant is riddled with the most common issues, bugs, all kinds of different things that normal shooters would never have on day one, oh that's made by developers and led by developers that haven't even played an FPS game, you see a studio and a publisher that lacks integrity and a spine, cowards in leadership roles, afraid to loosen their grip on the wheel, developers afraid to speak out and unable to express any of their creativity. Franchises destined for that is obscurity. Brutal. Ubisoft isn't just losing its way, it's already lost. And the only thing left is to watch it burn. You know, it's crazy to speculate about these kind of things, but it's an entirely different beast to find out what you've been believing this entire time is absolutely true. And I want to take the time to thank the developers that reached out to me. It was daring for them to do something like that. Obviously, uh, their identities are being kept secret for very obvious reasons. Most of these folks could lose their job over having these kind of discussions. But yeah, keep in mind, what's really sad about this is that there are developers that are working at these studios that want to see things change, that want to fix things, that see these obvious issues, but they're not allowed to do anything about it. That's That sucks. That's something that all of us can empathize with. I'm pretty sure that anybody that's watching this video right now has likely worked with some level of management that took them in the direction, oh, yeah, in the wrong direction, and led them down the wrong path. You know, the biggest issue for Ubisoft is <laughs> that the damage is already done. Their brand is already torched. Their name and their reputation is in shambles by now. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that doesn't come back, like, easily. Th this is like, like, to get their name clean again and respect again, they need to do, like, five or ten years of good games. Because people just don't forget and forgive so easily. They really don't. Uh, like, this is, like, their reputation has gone down the drain, and it's gonna be a hard climb back up. And looking at, looking and seeing that they have pushed back Assassin's Creed Shadows, it's for obvious reasons. Mm. While they're gonna say that it's for fixing issues in the game, there's issues that we saw in the trailers, so that's totally believable. The game likely does need more, you know, more time in the oven more than anything else, but polish. outside of that, you know, I really think it's just them trying to distance it from all of the bad press because there's a lot of people that have been talking about Ubisoft. There's a lot of people that have been talking about Assassin's Creed Shadows and it doesn't look good. And pushing it all the way to February, I don't think any of that's going to change anything. Exactly. If anything, seeing how often they like to put their own foot in their mouth when it comes to Assassin's Creed Shadows, you're just giving me and a bunch of other content creators more time to farm you more than anything else. <laughs> I was crazy. talking to one of the developers about the delay, and they're like, one of the thing that one of the things that really confused the whole group of developers is that they're like, well, we need more time to fix bugs and issues, but we're also going to add more quests and side content. They're like, those two things don't have anything what? to do with one another, and one creates more issues. <laughs> this doesn't make what? any sense. And also, the delaying to add more content. You push it to February. That's the not month enough. That Kingdom Come Deliverance Two. 
and Monster oh, Hunter Wilds Oh my release. god, right. You're cooked. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? That's what I told you. February is not going to be enough, especially with the landscape that the game uh, industry is going to be in in February. There's way too many big games coming out then. And that's like not even counting like unreleased stuff and unannounced stuff. Like there's likely like we're probably going to get like the Switch 2 early next year as well. Like, man, that's going to be rough. Doing. I don't know, man. I, I want to thank everybody. Thank you guys for watching. The and also, how embarrassing that all of this is directly contrasted by the new Ghost of Tsushima game. Ghost of Yote, I think. Can you imagine having all those issues and Ghost of Yote is announced? Man, that does not help them. <laughs> last video as well it was my first <laughs> 1 million view video that's just a wild achievement one that yeah. i wasn't really sure that i'd ever be able to achieve and you guys made that possible so thank you guys for that again if it wasn't for your guys support stories like these wouldn't be able to come out i hope i get to do more stuff like this in the future because i had a great time making this video this yeah. is probably the favorite this is my, my most favorite video that i've ever made um but yeah outside of that thank you guys uh, if you guys have enjoyed the content, make sure that you're sharing these videos. Make sure you like the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What are you doing? Come on, man. Just, <laughs> just bored. Eat. Don't shame me. If you guys want to catch me. me live, you can follow me on Twitch. I'm live two days a week. I'm working on videos four days a week. I'm yeah. sleeping one day a week. <laughs> <laughs> Damn rough. Uh, but outside of that, my friends, stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. I'll catch you guys next time. What a mad lad. What an absolute mad lad. What a great video. And oh my god. Yeah, uh, what, uh, just check it out. Say hi to him. Um, Well, say hi to him. I don't know what you want to say to him. But yeah, go go and support him. Do subscribe. Do like the video. It, it was a great one. Um, I, I really recommend um, the other video we did, which was like the downfall of, um, the downfall of Ubisoft. Um... Yeah, it's it really put things into perspective and uh, things don't look good. It is what it is. Quite unfortunate. But yeah, what, what a cool video. Um, YouTube, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, all the good good. And I'll see you on the next one. If you can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash kitty Basically every day. Bye.